I'm going to show you around Namsan today. Namsan is a mountain that's located in the central part of Seoul, but Namsan literally means mountain located on the south. And Namsan was named Namsan because it was a mountain that was located on the southern part of Hansong, which was the capital of Joseon Dynasty, which is an old name for Seoul. And I'm at a, one of my favorite places in Namsan. It's called Bunakijib. It's a house of literature and it's really cozy and it's nice. I wanted to start my video here because it's definitely one of my favorite places. And I'm going to walk all the way up to the Namsan Tower. I've shown you the Namsan Tower on the central part of Seoul video many times. Uh, check out our video on the central part of Seoul if you're curious. And let's go walk in. If you want to know which part of Seoul you're in, try going to the nearest Han River and look for Namsan. You'll be able to find out which part of Seoul you're in. Namsan is located in the center of Seoul, and some of the most visited areas, like Myeongdong, is located right next to Namsan. The highlight of Namsan is the view from the top. Stay on the video to take a look at the amazing views of Seoul from Namsan. Namsan and Namsan Tower is not only Seoul's the landmark, but also a very historic place. The House of Literature where I started this video is now a cultural place and was designated as Seoul's historic asset, but it used to be Korean CIA chief's official residence. Korean CIA used to be an organization that focused not only on national security issues, but also worked to maintain the former Korean president's dictatorship. They often made innocent people into spies that were sent from North Korea. House of Literature is not the only place related to the Korean CIA. The Seoul Metropolitan Government's Annex Building in Namsan used to be a place where the Korean CIA brought civilians and tortured them, often making anti-government personnel into spies. The building was built in 1977, during Park jung hees reign, and it's secretly located in the corner of Namsan. Enough of the dark stories. The food that Koreans relate Namsan the most is definitely tonkatsu, pork cutlet. There is a section of the road that goes around Namsan that has multiple places where they sell pork cutlet or tonkatsu. There were tonkatsu selling places since late 1970s in the area, and the area became crowded with other places where they sold tonkatsu in the 1990s. There is a big dispute on when and how the place became famous for tonkatsu but I don't think there is a really clear answer on that. The fact is, Namsan Tonkatsu is famous. I went into the most empty place, which offered coke as a service with the Tonkatsu because although the components of the plate are a little different, the tonkas in the area are all famous for its size, and there isn't really that much difference in the taste, really. And I needed to film all the food that I was eating. The area's signature menu is wangdongkasu, or king pork cutlet when translated literally. It's usually served with rice, salad, and other side dishes that help people get rid of the greasiness of the pork cutlet. Tonkasu is actually a unique food that evolved from the pork cutlet from Europe and Japan. Japan took Europe's pork cutlet and made it into a Japanese version, but the Japanese version has thick meat and is usually cut into pieces so that people can eat it with chopsticks. It's served that way. But that evolved into a Korean version by serving the whole tonkatsu so that people can eat it with knife and fork while serving Korean-friendly side dishes like rice and kimchi with it. There are people that claim tonkatsu started to be served this way because Koreans used to look up to the so-called Western culture. So they took using knife and fork to eat food that originated from the Western culture, such as steak, to be more of a high-class kind of culture. They actually used to have formal restaurants that sold foods that was classified as gyeongyangshik. The literal translation of that would be light Western food. This was up to the early 1990s, I think, because I don't have much memory of eating in such restaurants. Anyways, after eating the tonkatsu, I started climbing Namsan. It's actually the first time that I've walked up to Namsan because there are buses that go up to the Namsan Tower, 
and a lot of people take the cable car as well. But this time, I decided to walk and the entrance was located right between the cable car and the pork cutlet eating places. There's also a very well paved road that goes around Namsan that's made for walking so you can visit Namsan for exercise if you don't live very far from the area. Or on the weekends, there are usually a lot of people that hike or bike up Namsan in the weekends. It took me about 25 to 30 minutes walk while filming during the walk so it should take you 30 to 35 minutes maximum even if you're not a very good hiker. But the stairs are fairly steep all the way so you don't want to hurry to the top. Another reason why you shouldn't hurry to the top is the amazing views that you can see on the way up. There's actually a deck in the middle for you to look around the northern part of Seoul and the view is amazing. You'll see old looking walls on the way up, and the walls show that Namsan was the southern border of Hanseong, which was the capital of Joseon dynasty that existed in the Korean peninsula before the Japanese annexation, and is the old name of Seoul. The wall extends up to the northeastern side of Seoul and Dongdaemun. For more information about the area, check out our video on the link above. I'm walking on Namsan, I'm like about two thirds way there I think and you see a city wall behind me that's a city wall from the Hanseong era during the Joseon dynasty and the area that you see behind me is actually the uh, southwestern part of Seoul which I explained on the other video so like what you can see is you can see like 360 degrees all parts of Seoul uh, from Namsan and that's Yeouido right there so that's very far from here but the weather's pretty good you can see out really far I'm very lucky today and I have another one-third of the way to go up and uh, so let's go. Area around Namsan is not huge and they have all these locks that people place around the fences. But the highlight of Namsan and the reason why you must visit Namsan when in Seoul is the view of Seoul from the top. You can see all parts of Seoul because Namsan is located in the center of Seoul. People usually look at the northeastern part of Seoul because they have the biggest viewing deck on that side. But the landscape of the southern part of Seoul viewed from the top is also amazing. I'm waiting for the sun to set because I want to fill in the night landscape of Seoul. Uh, the sun is setting right now and you can see that there are a lot of people that's uh, looking at the sunset from Namsan. So this is a really area where people visit a lot, even the Koreans. Uh, in the weekdays, it's Monday today, I thought there won't be a lot of people, but there obviously are a lot of people and there are a lot of mosquitoes here. But uh, I'm going to fill in the night landscape and then this is going to be the end of our Namsan video and I'm actually going to go around the different places surrounding Namsan and I'll be introducing those places to you and enjoy the rest of Namsan landscape that I'm going to be showing you at the rest of the video.